Dear students, I am Trishna Chakravarti, lecturer, English department, the Anpur Special School and College. Hope you are fine and passing happy days. You see that uh, we, the teachers of you, are trying to keep you with your studies uh, through these online classes and this is our effort. Uh, so, today I have uh, come here with the topic right from our parts which is in the unit 5 of your English study paper book. So, uh, you will see that these are the basic some rules for you which will help you to uh, place the verb in the right form. So, you see, let's start our topic. Uh, right form of verbs, number 1, the boy play football. To uh, place the verb in the right form, you have to keep in mind three things. Number 1, tense. You have to see what is if the sentence is in present or past or future tense. And the another thing you have to keep in mind that is if the subject. If the subject is uh, singular or plural, is it third person or first person or second person. And another thing you have to keep in mind that if the sentence is in active voice or in passive voice. So you see that number one the boy play football. The boy play football. So, this is a present indefinite tense and the subject is third person, third person singular. So, in a present indefinite tense, after the subject which is third person singular, we will use as or ES after the verb. So, the right form of verb will be place. The boy plays football. If the subject is plural, for example, if the subject is plural, if it is the boys, boys are plural, we won't use any s or es after the verb. Then the right form of verb will be play. The boys play football. I think you have got the point. The next one is <coughs> the moon shine at night. If we uh, notice universal truth, universal truth in a sentence, the verb will be in present indefinite terms. If we notice universal truth or habitual fact or regular work, the verb will be in present indefinite terms. So the moon shines at night. You see that this is an universal truth. The moon always shines at night. So, as it is a universal, it is a universal truth and it is present in divinity tense and the subject is third person and singular. And the subject is third person and singular. We will use as or yes after the verb. I have told it in the First one, the moon shines. The moon shines at night. So you should keep in mind that the universal truths and the habitual facts are always will be in the present indefinite form. Then come to number three. A good boy, a good boy prepares his lessons regularly. If you notice good words. Regularly, usually, generally, normally, daily. If you notice such words in a sentence, you will be sure that this is a present indefinite tense. And um, after uh, Becoming sure that the present indefinite tense, you will have to follow the uh, rules of the first one and the second one. I have told you. A good boy, as it is third person and singular number, we will have to use as after the verb. And the right form of verbs to be prepares. A good boy prepares his lesson regularly. You will notice the word regularly, usually, generally, normally, daily, occasionally uh, and another some words are also there. You will find it in this kind of a group. You will have to 
he will mind the work and he will be sure that this is a present in the tense and if the um, subject is separate from singular number, you will have to use S or S yes after the verb. And for this sentence, the right form of verb will be prepares. A good boy prepares his lesson regularly. Then come to number four. Keep in mind that you will have to practice the right form of verbs as uh, most of the students think it as a complex uh, topic. You have to practice uh, every day uh, at least uh, five right form of verbs in your home. Number four, I, you see that there is not negative. I mean recently. Recently, notice the word recently. If you find the word recently, lately, just, just now, yet, ever, you will show that the sentence will be in the present perfect form. I say, I didn't say that. If you notice the word recently, lately, just, just now, be it, ever, you will be sure that the sentence will be in the present perfect form. And I hope you know the rules of present perfect form that is subject plus has or have plus past form, past participle form of the member and another words. So, as uh, you notice that there is recently, you will be sure that this is a present perfect tense. So, I write the structure of present perfect tense. I am writing the structure of present perfect tense here. Subject, subject plus has or have plus. past participle of her plus object or complement if there is a <coughs> so can you notice that there is a note you put the word C so the sentence will be in negative form at first we have to uh, make it affirmative and then we will try to make it negative. I use you uh, suppose this is C. I see him recently. So the present perfect tense will be I have seen. I have the present participle of the verb see. So seen. I have, sorry, past participle. I have seen him recently. This is the affirmative sentence. Now I will make it negative. I haven't seen him recently. So the sentence will be I have not seen recently. And the right form of verbs will be here have not seen. I have not seen him recently. I hope you got the point. Now come to rule number 5 now come to rule number 5 he come here yesterday notice the word yesterday notice the word yesterday if you find any word such yesterday ago long ago last last night previous day if you find such word you will be sure that this is the past infinite tense if any word marking past tense in the sentence you will be sure that this is past infinite tense so you notice that he comes here to study you know the past form of the word come is, will be came. So the right form will be he came here yesterday. Hope you got the point. Then come to number 6. It is many years since 
I meet you. It is many years since I meet you. Notice that there is a word since. Now, if you find present indefinite tense before the word since, if there is present indefinite tense before the word since, you will use past indefinite tense after the word since. If there is a present indefinite tense before the word since, you will use past indefinite tense after the word since. So, the right form here will be met. You know the past form of met is met. It is many years since I met you. Clear? Then, you see that many years have passed since my father died. Notice the word since. So, you see that this is not present indefinite tense. Present indefinite tense. This is present perfect tense. The rule will be the same. That means, if there is a present indefinite tense or present perfect tense before the word since, we will use past indefinite tense after the word since. I again say that, if there is a present indefinite tense or present perfect tense before the word since, we will use past indefinite tense after the word since. So, the right form of verbs here will be that you know that the past form of verb is verb, verb die is died. So, many years have passed since my father died. I think you have got the point. And if you don't understand any terms, any rule, you can knock me. Then, you see, number 8, it was long since I see her last. There is another rule of since, it was long since I see her last. Notice the word since. If there is a past indefinite tense before the word since, we, we use past perfect tense after the word since. If there is a past indefinite tense before the word since, we will use past perfect tense after the word since. So, you see that this is past indefinite tense was and we have to use past perfect tense. So, the right form of verb will be had. See, you know the rule of past perfect tense that is subject plus head that plus the past participle of the form the main verb and then the object of complement. So the right form will be had seen. It was long since I had seen seen her last. Now number nine. Would that I go to college? Would that I go to college? You notice that if the sentence begins with would that, if the sentence begins with would that, we have to use would after subject and after would we have to use the basic form of the verb that means basic form of the principal verb i again say if there is a sentence which begins to put that we have to use could after the subject and then the main form of the verb so this Right form of verbs will be could go. Would that I could go to college. Would that I could go to college. Then come to rule number 9. I can see I turn pain. I can see I turn pain. Notice the word fancy. If you notice the word like push, fancy, it is time and it is hiding. If you notice the word push, fancy, it is time.
child and it is high time we have to use the past tense of the verb given word given verb we have to use the past tense of the given verb if you notice the word wish fancy it is time and it is high time so the right form here will be turned the right form here will be turned i fancy i turned pay then it is time to eat our lunch it is time to eat our lunch notice the verb it is time notice the word it is time we have to use past tense of the main verb if the sentence begins with it is time it is high time push and fancy then you know all of you know the past tense of the word e that will be eight it is time we ate our lunch so dear students i hope it is enough for today there are many more rules of right form of verbs um, and you have to practice them in your <coughs> everyday life i uh, have told you that you have to practice at least five right form of verbs in each day uh, which will uh, make your uh, the topic smooth and clear and hope all of you are all of you will be fine uh, we are going to start our class um, soon so till then stay home and stay safe thank you